Hi, this is Tom Muro with World Class Coaching and another in our series of animated drills. So this is a 7v7 game that I'm sure has been done before. Um, it's something that I decided to do with one of my teams because they were really having trouble finding the right moment to get in behind the other team's defense. We found ourselves playing a lot of possession but never penetrating. And so I decided I would use a game like this in order to encourage them uh, to get in behind the defense and to practice different ways to get in behind the defense. So the way it's set up is 7v7. I thought I'd start with just seven players on the black team here so that you can see how I set them up. So it's two defenders in this for this team. Then we've got three midfielders and three forwards. Um, forward or midfielders are kind of spread out flat rather than being stacked for this team. Uh, what I would do with the other team then is I'd kind of set them up counter to that so that I'm creating some openings. If I just set them both up as 2-3-2, two, two, well, they're on top of each other, and you could definitely do that, and then they try to find spaces in behind. So there's no reason you couldn't do it that way. Um, but I like to make it sometimes different to give the players kind of a different challenge. So in this case, I set it up as three in the back, three in the midfield, and then one up top. So we'll put one striker up here for the yellow team. And so now there are holes for the black team to try to play through, which obviously if we match them up, there would be two. Uh, it just creates you know, some ability for uh, the black team to maybe move side to side and, and maybe even get two players getting through one of the gaps and, and just trying to find openings. So the whole idea here is for them to try to work the ball. And this line is a line of offside. And it's also a barrier early in the game. So when we first start playing this, no one is allowed outside the cones. So inside this middle area. And basically I just take the middle third and block that off. So that you're not allowed in your defending third or the other team's attacking third. And the goal is to try to get a ball in behind for then a player to run onto it. So the rule is kind of like offside, no one's allowed in that attacking area until the ball has been played. The other way you could get in is you could get in on the dribble. So if, if the opportunity there is to get in, then they could do that. The first way I played this with my team is that only the player who gets in behind is allowed in that area. So no recovering defenders and uh, no supporting attackers. So to begin with, I just want the players to try to you know, understand the rules of the game, understand how they need to move the ball in order to find openings, create openings, and then get the ball through those openings, either on the dribble or trying to find diagonal passes through or a straight ball to a diagonal run. Just try to find ways in behind. So that's the first way we play it. And just kind of let the game flow. If it goes into this area uh, and it goes out of bounds, goalkeeper uh, would play it. Early on in the game, I played it to where um, a player could come back to get the ball and then play. And you know that's the way it started so that there was a bit of depth here and support so that it was a little bit easier to play in. You could also play it on, let's say that, for example, if the black team has the ball, you can just have basically their four and five split and try to play it in that way. So it just depends on how you have your team set up, how you want to do that. Uh, but early on in the game, the focus was play in the middle, find a way through. Then the next thing I did was, okay, if you break into the attacking third of the field with a through ball, now you're allowed, or a dribble, now you're allowed support, one supporting attacker, and the defending team is allowed to bring somebody back. We'll just give them somebody facing the correct direction here. And so somebody, you know, getting back on defense, we need like a sprinter or something, but uh, for now it'll do this player getting in. So this player is trying to come back in. So it's 2v1 plus the goalkeeper trying to score a goal. So not only do you need to get in behind, but you need to score, obviously, in this game in order to generate the point. So that's the first adaptation that I added. Then uh, the next thing would be if the ball is played back here or out for a goal kick, let's say, or even after a goal. Then the defending team was allowed inside their half, and we'll just give all their, or inside their third, I should say. Uh, we'll give them all their players here. So they're allowed to come back in here and open up and receive the ball in order to create more space 
to build up. So that was another variation uh, that I added. Then as soon, you know, then the next kind of phase of it is as soon as the attacking team gets the ball in behind, everybody's allowed to get in behind. So basically that zone is gone. Once it's penetrated, that zone is gone. And then finally, we did it so it was a completely open area. I would leave those cones down as the line of offside. So either the deepest defender or that line of cones. So if the defense pushed up all the way, then that line remained as the line of offside. But if the defense dropped in behind that line, then that became the line of offside. And as a coach, I stayed on the outside. I stayed out here. I actually had an injured player as well. And uh, she served as the, the AR on the other side. So we stayed here in order to watch that line of offside and try to let the players know if they're on or off. So it was a great game, worked out really well, really encouraged the players to get the ball in behind, helped to give them practice on that, helped give the attacking players practice on staying on side and making those runs as well. So really effective game, worked well for my team. Give it a try with your team and see how it goes.